We're back with some more college basketball action here for Monday, March 6th. Conference Championship Week is in full effect. Got all sorts of games going on today and into this week. And it is worth noting for all the games really this week, um, you know, just based on when I record, we may not know some of the matchups. I mean, for today's games, um, we're still missing the Summit League game and that Big Sky game as of recording this one. So make sure you check the comments down below, follow it on Twitter, um, as well as all the social media links down below in case I end up adding any picks at any point this week um, but I do have a couple of games that I like already here on Monday's card so let's jump right into it now we start today's show off in Indianapolis as Northern Kentucky takes on Youngstown State here in the Horizon League Tournament. Northern Kentucky comes into this game as the 167th overall team in the Hot Tippet Power Ranking. Youngstown State is the 174th overall team. And, you know, overall, it's a Youngstown State team um, that has played some pretty good basketball this season. You know, we're able to get the win over Northern Kentucky at home a few weeks ago. A, a really a game where Youngstown State was just dominant in, end up winning that that one by 18 points um their first meeting did go to double overtime all the way back on december 1st at northern kentucky um a double overtime game there in that one um with northern kentucky so you know end up splitting the season series one and one both these teams coming off of wins in their first games of the horizon league tournament and, and overall it's a youngstown state team that has just done a great job shooting the basketball this season a 55.2 effective field goal percentage on the year and they're hitting 37.1 percent from beyond the arc Dwayne Cohill has led the way for Youngstown State, 17.8 points per game for him. Um, you know, really, it is hard to match the production that Youngstown State has had on the offensive side of things. And Northern Kentucky isn't a terrible team shooting the basketball, but has struggled a bit more this season. Only a 50.2 effective field goal percentage on the year, um, and they're only hitting 35.9% from beyond the arc. Defensively, neither one of these teams have been great, but one area that Youngstown State has actually been fairly strong in um, is in the rebounding department, pulling down 71. 1.8% off the defensive glass. Northern Kentucky only pulling down 67.7% off the defensive glass. Offensively speaking, they're two fairly even teams. Youngstown State 30.8% off the offensive glass. Northern Kentucky 30.9%. But really the key for Youngstown State in this game, much like the second meeting between these two teams here a few weeks ago, is going to be to push tempo. And that's really the success that Youngstown State has had this whole season is when they can get up and down the court, run in transition, and just really show off how well they are shooting the basketball they're the 144th fastest team in the country while northern kentucky is one of the slowest in the league um 357th in the nation this season i think youngstown state here in this conference tournament game is able to push tempo is able to get that offense going and i think they win this game and cover the spread taking youngstown state minus two and a half here against northern kentucky now we head to Las Vegas for the West Coast Conference Tournament as BYU takes on St. Mary's. BYU comes into this game as the 68th overall team in the Hot Tibet Power Ranking. St. Mary's is the 18th overall team. And, you know, a couple of things that really have nothing to do with this game, but I love about this West Coast Conference Tournament. One, the format is just great. You know, St. Mary's, Gonzaga getting buys to the, the semifinals. I love that setup. You know, BYU wins over Portland um, and Loyola Marymount here to get to this point. But I also also really love the court for this conference tournament i'm not sure why it's nothing super special um, but the color scheme is just one of my favorites every year but outside of that getting to this actual game byu taking on st mary's you know we look back to the regular season it was the st mary's team that found a lot of success this season i mean their only losses to lmu um, and obviously that gonzaga game to finish out the season but we're able to get wins over this byu team twice now it is worth mentioning byu was competitive in both those games kept it close but overall down the stretch of the season especially when BYU had to go play better opponents. They really just struggled this season, and they kind of just struggled to shoot the basketball. Only a 51.5 effective field goal percentage, and they were not good from the perimeter, only hitting 32.8% from beyond the arc. St. Mary's doing a much better job shooting the basketball, a 52.8 effective field goal percentage on the year, and hitting 36.8% from beyond the arc. Logan Johnson has been a great shot scorer all season long for St. Mary's, 14.7 points.
points per game for him. Uh, but the true reason St. Mary's, I believe, has had so much success this season in the West Coast Conference is because of that defense. The fifth overall team in defensive efficiency coming into this game, while BYU is the 41st overall team. And it truly is hard to match what St. Mary's has done on the defensive side of the ball. Their shot defense has been absolutely remarkable, only giving up a 45.9 effective field goal percentage on the year, while BYU allowing a 49.3. St. Mary's has also held their opponents to 32.2% from beyond the arc. BYU giving up 33.6. And really just across the board is a St. Mary's team that is very, very dominant on the defensive side of the ball. And a lot of it is just because of how well they can do controlling the tempo. They play one of the slowest styles in the entire nation, the 359th slowest team in the country, while BYU is the 66th fastest team. And I really think that's going to be the key for St. Mary's in this game. Slow BYU down, rely on that defense to, to prevent some shots, prevents points from going through. Um, and I think if St. Mary's does that, they can win this game and cover this spread. I'm digging St. Mary's minus six and a half here against BYU. Now, quickly, before we get into the final game here on Monday's card, if you haven't already checked out the website, head over to hottipbets.com. We got college basketball, NHL, NBA, UFC, and horse racing picks being posted up there every single day. So make sure you take a look at all of that. Also, follow the Hot Tip Bets main account at Hot Tip Bets on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to stay up to date with all the content being posted over there, as well as my personal accounts at Hot Tip Bets Chris on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter to stay up to date with all the content over there, and also on Betstamp where you can get early access to all of my picks and get a notification every single time that I place a bet. And last but definitely not least, if you're watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on here for Monday's card. And let's get into this final game. We head back to Indianapolis for the Horizon League tournament as Cleveland State takes on Milwaukee. Cleveland State comes into this game as the 203rd overall team in the Hot Tibet Power Ranking. Milwaukee is the 286th overall team. And, you know, these are two teams that obviously met and, and are familiar with each other very recently. The final game of Horizon League regular season play um, against each other, a game at Milwaukee that they ultimately came out victorious. And, you know, Milwaukee was able to get the best of them um, in their first meeting early on in conference play as well. And, you know, it's an obvious answer that I love this Milwaukee team. I, I've been betting on them all the time this season as far as Horizon League play goes. Definitely my most bet team. Um, but they've just really impressed me this season. They've been a great team on the offensive side of things. A 52.2 effective field goal percentage on the year, hitting 35.6% from beyond the arc. B.J. Freeman has led the way 17.4 points per game. He has really done a great job shooting the basketball this season. And really, offensively speaking, it's hard to find find too many things not to love about what Milwaukee has been able to do this season. Cleveland State, on the other hand, certainly, you know, has had praises offensively. It's been a terrible team on offense, but they just don't do a great job shooting the basketball. Only a 49.4 effective field goal percentage on the year and only hitting 30.2% from beyond the arc. Now, Cleveland State makes up for it a little bit on the defensive side of things. Their shot defense certainly isn't horrible, um, but Milwaukee's been very good in the shot defense department, too, and we certainly saw that on display here, you know, a week ago when these two teams last played. Cleveland State giving up a 48.5 effective field goal percentage on the year, while Milwaukee holding their opponents to a 48 effective field goal percentage. Cleveland State is also allowing 32.1% from beyond the arc, while Milwaukee giving up 31.4%. And overall, similar to, to what we saw in that final game of the regular season, Milwaukee needs to push tempo in this game. You know, they play the 17th fastest tempo in the entire nation, while Cleveland State is the 271st slowest. Really, if Milwaukee can do that, get up and down the court, rely on their shooters to score points, and and really just show what their offense has been able to do here in Horizon League play. I don't think there's any reason they can't keep this game close. Um, and I think they cover this spread. Taking Milwaukee plus three here against Cleveland State.